a three pounds of goat meat bone in and some pieces are about an inch to an inch and a half depending like this one here it's a bit bigger but that's because there's the bones in there if you wanted to use boneless goat you can certainly rock that it's just I like the deep rich flavor you get from bones and one of the key components to this recipe this Jira goat is seasoning it and marinating it now I'm gonna start off with something a little bit controversial and when I say controversial it's because people think the only time you use curry and goat is when you're making curry goat but I love the sort of spice blend that makes up a good curry powder when you marinate with it so a tablespoon of that curry powder I have here half of a medium sized onion that I gave a dice to we need some fresh ground black pepper tomato and the tomato as I've explained in many of the dishes when it comes to curries and stuff like that it brings the acidity to the game and helps balance off any sort of funky flavors and stuff like that because you need balance in everything that you do salt and I like using sea salt if you don't have sea salt use what you have now here's the thing this is all about cumin or jira in the marination process I have here what's called anchar masala and you have to check out the Caribbean grocery stores or check online it's a trimbegonian thing I think but I like that in there and that's a tablespoon of that because there is and I don't know why I showed you the little container again but there is roasted cumin in there as well so I'm gonna get that earthiness whilst it marinates goat is one of them things that um, it can have a pronounced flavor all on its own so trying to um, tame that flavor or to build on that flavor or to sort of add the balance that we talked about earlier there I have two heaping tablespoons of my homemade Caribbean green seasoning you notice the vibrancy of the color that with your spoon cool yourself now man anyhow let me zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about there and that is because the base of my Caribbean green seasoning is olive oil and it helps to maintain the you have so many different wonderful properties and and and, and you know, it just looks good and it, it it maintains the flavors of all the herbs that I use in my green seasoning rather than when you use water or vinegar as the base and you know Caribbean green seasoning we've talked about this many times it is a sort of a puree or a blend of all the herbs we like using in our dishes especially meat and fish dishes where um, you know there's scallion in there, thyme, shadow benny, cilantro, big leaf thyme, um, scallions as I said yeah plus there's like garlic and seasoning peppers and all that in there so that is the sort of base for many 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 of our recipes and basically all you want to do now is give that a good mix now here's the thing about this traditionally Jira pork, Jira chicken, all of those things is a great little a sort of a snack people have when they have an alcoholic beverages and stuff like that. But it goes great as a side dish as well too. And you know, you guys probably have a potluck coming up, and Marcia, your Jamaican co-worker, always bringing that curry goat. Your Jamaican curry goat is our best. But you know, you bring this Jira goat, and all of a sudden, you shining like the North Star at the people picnic. I'm telling you. Watch me. So now we're just gonna allow that. Look at that. Hey, look at that now. It's real nice this in there. And I'm telling you, it's you know the smell in here is captivating. We're gonna allow this, we're gonna put some plastic wrap on it into the fridge at least three hours. Now normally I say at least two hours. This time I'm saying three hours because I want that go to absorb everything. So we're gonna get that deep rich flavor from day one, from the start, from the beginning, from A. Got a medium heat, tablespoon and a half of vegetable oil in there. And to that, we're adding cumin seeds. I'm just gonna hit that a little stir because I want everything in the oil. I'm gonna turn my heat down to low because I don't want to burn it and um, please forgive me throughout the video you will hear me referring uh, saying cumin seeds and then jira it is the same thing it's just in the Caribbean because of the Indian influence we call it jira 
This one here is just the raw, well, dried cumin seed. It hasn't been toasted or anything. The later on, we will add ground roasted jira or cumin, which will give it that bam bam near the end there. But for now, we're developing flavor. I like a lot of garlic. So that's about 12 tools of garlic that I just um, used the back of the side of my knife and I smashed it with. Again, heat on low because we're not trying to burn anything, but the combination of the garlic in here along with the cumin or jira seeds is creating that base of flavor to really hit home. And again, goat is one of those things that, you know, it has a, a flavor of its own. So we're trying to manipulate that flavor and give it that cumin or jira bang. Now here's the thing, if you cannot source goat and you have lamb, you can rock the same dish with lamb, except I find that with lamb, the cook time tends to be a little bit um, quicker. You know, three minutes later, and this is where we are. We got nice little golden edges on the garlic. And I like leaving the garlic in big chunky pieces like this. So during the cooking process, it'll break down. And what doesn't break down, you will have nice little flavor bursts when you're eating the jira goat later on. So now I'm going to turn my heat up to medium high. And I'm going to start adding the seasoned goat to the pot. Yeah, the marinade and everything went in there if you were paying attention. All we're gonna do now, the heat is still on medium high, we want to sort of sear the outside of the goat pieces there. I would also recommend that the same bowl where you marinated the goat, I don't know if I can sneak it in there. I have eight cups of water, and that's gonna pick up all the remaining marinade that's left back there. All we wanna do is sort of give this that sear for about four or five minutes. And then we'll place the lid on it and allow it to spring up its own natural juices. So that a fun little stir. And you can see we already developed some color with it there. The whole idea is not really to develop any color to be honest with you. Um, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna turn our heat down to medium low and we'll put the lid on there and that's gonna sprout its own natural juices. We want to pull all of that out to help concentrate the overall flavor of this Jira goat. It's been just under 10 minutes and you can see all the natural juices that sprouted up there. What we need to do now, we've pulled out all of the, the liquid. We want to sort of intensify the flavor and to do so, we're gonna burn off all of that natural liquid that sprouted up there. So crank up your heat to medium high again leave the pot uncovered and allow all of that liquid to burn off. We want to get back to the oil that we started off with. At that point is when we're gonna add the water from the bowl there that we marinated the goat in. And that at that point, that step is gonna be to braise it and to get it for tender falling off the bones. And you can see it won't take long. We've got the oils that we started off with there. And when I say oils we started off with, I mean the vegetable oil plus the goat is very fatty. So you notice how much oil you're seeing on the bottom there? It will start to render down some of that fat because we are on direct heat now. So with that heat on that medium high, you can even turn it up to high, all the way high. Totally up to you. Here's where we're gonna add that water to the pot. The goal now is to bring this up to a boil and then we're gonna reduce it to a simmer. We're gonna put the lid on there, slightly ajar as we've done with some of the, um, the more tougher meats that we've cooked in the past. Now whether you're using boneless goat or as in my case here with bones, it will take a while to break down and get nice and tender. So do have some patience. Here's the thing, yeah, you will say, well Chris, we can use a pressure cooker by all means. Nobody is denying that. But the flavor you will get from allowing it to develop layers and layers of flavor from slow, low and slow, a pressure cooker just cannot give you that. I guarantee you that. And I will fight with anybody who's, who says differently. Anyhow, the other thing we need to add in here, notice I didn't really spice it up yet. I didn't drop that Caribbean sunshine in there yet. Yeah. So it's Caribbean sunshine time there a whole scotch bonnet pepper 
that I'm just going to float, I'm just going to tuck him down a little bit. Now here's the thing, I'm unlike this very spicy, it's supposed to be spicy. It means already colorful side now, gosh, beauty. <laughs> I like it spicy, so later on I will break it, but what I'm trying to impress on you guys is allow it to breathe there for about an hour with the pepper floating. Try your best not to break it. Fish it out, and then you won't get that, yo, that kick of heat, you won't get it, but you will get the nice scotch bonnet flavors in there as well too. So it's boiling pretty vigorously there now. So I'm gonna turn my heat down, lid on, like I said, like this. And then we're gonna, we're gonna leave a little space there. It's been going for about an hour and a half since we added the water in there. I did have to add a bit more water, so I added an additional two cups of water. Now here's where things are gonna start getting interesting. The scotch bonnet pepper, boom, I bursted it. Yeah, it busts up, just like that. Fish it out if you're concerned about the raw heat. Yeah, you don't need that in there, but I might like it hot and spicy and thing and thing. The other thing we need to do here now is, in about 15 minutes, we'll taste it for salt, we'll adjust the salt, and then we will decide whether or not we want gravy, or we don't want gravy. We can cook it all the way down. But what I'm gonna do is crank up my heat now to medium high, to medium, because I want this more, more rolling boil than anything else, because here's where we're gonna add some more flavor. And we are making Jira goat. So here's where the ground roasted Jira is gonna make an appearance in there. That is a tablespoon and a half. I know immediately we get that color. So here's what I'm gonna do now is cook that with the lid off reduce that down and by adding the ground roasted jira or cumin at the end here we're gonna get that bam bam punch of flavor start to thicken up it's been about 25 minutes since we added the ground roasted jira in there here's where we're gonna personalize things you will taste it for salt here and adjust it you will either crank up the heat well two you will make sure the goat is as tender as you like it this is falling off the bones and three, you will adjust the sort of consistency of the gravy. Whether or not you want gravy or not is totally up to you. I am eating this with some steamed hot, some steamed white rice, so I want gravy. Typically, when you would do this, or when you would find this being sold in bars and wherever else in Trinidad and Tobago, it would be, what they say, fried down. So it would be relatively dry down to the oils. As with everything that I make, when it comes to like jeera and curry and stuff like that, I like adding shadow benny at the end here. If you don't have shadow benny, which is culantro, you can always add cilantro. So I'm just gonna give this another couple minutes, but as we allow this to thicken up here, let's just quickly recap, because I know some of you are thinking, why Chris calling this thing the ultimate jeera goat? Well, first of all, we seasoned and marinated it. And in the seasoning, it wasn't just about the the um, the green seasoning and, and stuff like that. We added a touch, I just a little kiss of curry in there. We added the anchor masala, which as I said, already has some roasted jeera in there. Then, yo, after that marination happened, what did we do? We, 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 we toasted some jeera seeds or cumin seeds in hot oil. We added all that garlic in there and we then we dumped in everything. We cooked that down to pull out all the flavors and everything else. Then we slowly braised it and near the last half hour there, that is when we, well, I man just went and bust the pepper and I added the ground roasted jeera. <laughs> Sup soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I mean, trying to tell people the email address, then butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene, Irene. Jira. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you all in the kitchen with me. We just learned how to make Jira goat something your master will want the recipe as well if you know what I mean Anyhow, I do hope you guys 
get the opportunity to give this one a try. You see what I'm talking about? This one that gravy thicken. Oi. Anyways, I'm going on talking you know, with a nice little plate of white rice. And some of this jira goat here. Yeah? The ultimate jira goat. You better recognize. What's up soldiers? Don't forget to click subscribe. If you've already clicked subscribe, hit that bell notification thing. I want to all you missing out on the new videos, man. Come on, click.